Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. <laughs> to... Our shop. Hey. Our shop. Yeah, that's right. It's time for session number three with the bench. Uh, it is Sarah. Yeah, it's a finely <laughs> woodworking bench that is my wife's. So yes, it's we're gonna have a little bit of fun getting this thing up and standing. Let's dive in. And now it's time for round three. Uh, last time we made the long stretchers that go between the legs from side to side. And uh, the time before that we made the bench top. And so now we're actually going to connect the two leg pairs front to back. And this will give us two end cap leg pairs um, that will always be put together. So these are going to go together with draw bore tenons. Cool thing about draw bore tenons is they don't need any glue. Um, so theoretically with this whole project uh, we can do it without any glue other than the lamination of the top and the lamination of the legs. So if I got boards that were big enough for the top and legs, I wouldn't need um, any glue for this, which is kind of a fun thing. So for the tenon, we're going to cut down the cheeks. And when you're a beginner, it's much easier to use a Japanese saw. They track a little bit easier because you can't over control them. But the leading tooth is on the far side from you. Um, so because of the sporadic inputs of the human, they make them much, much easier to, uh, to run because you have less control with a Japanese saw. But uh, once you master the Japanese saw, you might want to try a Western saw because you get far more control with the Western saw. It's just more skill is needed because uh, it's very, very easy to over control them. Now here you can see we're staying away from the line and that's a very good thing to do as a beginner. Uh, yes, once you get better, you can get closer and closer to the line until you can cut right on the line. But you want to stay away from it because it's always easier to come back and clean it out. Here you can see we're eh, somewhere between a 16th and an 8th inch um, away from the edge. Now these tenons are just on the two ends. I could make the tenon all the way around, but because this um, is, is in style, it's really not a huge issue. Uh, now if I were doing this with a tusked tenon, I would definitely only want to do the two edges, but with the drawboard tenon, I could do it with all four. Um, it's kind of one of those personal things. So when coming back towards the line, stay away from it as long as possible. Go halfway to the line, and then halfway to the line again, and then halfway to the line again until you just can't take off anymore until you go right into the line. That will give you a nice clean cut and you don't have to be uh, worrying about going over it or uh, chipping out too much. Now all those shots were done with me on the camera. Now Luke came over to do some of it and so you can actually see me doing some of the teaching um, because I don't have to run the camera. And so I'll actually do the, the first couple strokes, show her how to do it and then hand it over to her. Here we're going to start cutting the mortises. Now we laid these out with the lines on both sides. And one of the tricks is to put a line down the middle of the mortise so you know where to put the auger bit. Now when running a brace, you want to put your head on top of it. Uh, it's kind of counterintuitive. You think that the hand driving it around is going to require more force. But it's actually the hand on top doing the stabilization that requires more force. The, the small motor movement required to keep the top in line with the bit is actually more work than the hand going around. Uh, and so putting your forehead on top will stabilize a little bit. Here you can see the line going through the middle of the mortise and that way we know where to put the bit so we're not going outside the edges. Just makes it a little easier to line things up. We're going to drill three holes uh, and we're not going to go all the way through the board. You want to go down halfway rather than blowing out the other side. And the reason for that is if the bit goes off course and is at an odd angle, then it's really not a problem if that problem is on the inside. Uh, but if it's coming to the outside, that is an issue because the most important thing is the entrance and the exit wound. We want those to be nice and clean so that we get a nice, clean, tight joint. The best way to do that is to drill from one side and then drill from the other, and that way any imperfections are in the middle. And if there are any imperfections in the middle, it's really not a big problem because this is a through mortise. So if it's, as long as it's supported on both ends of the mortise, it works out really, really well. And here's the fun part, where you get the chisel and you get to chop out. We're going to do some paring in, um, and the paring in is incredibly fun. This is, this is a part that I had a hard time giving it back to her because I really enjoy it. <laughs> again, we're going to stay away from the line. Uh, go about halfway to the line, and then get halfway to the line again, and halfway to the line again. And always leave that last shaving until you're ready to take that off all the way around. That way if there's any mishap or any problems, that last shaving is still there. It gives you a little leeway of protection. When chiseling in on the ends, you want to be careful not to pound it in too far, otherwise the chisel is going to get stuck and hard to pull out. So you 
drive it in a little ways on one side, and then you turn it, go on the side, drive it in a little ways on that side, and each time go down a little farther. Then go back to the end, go back to the side, go back to the end, uh, until the, the chisel gets down all the way it needs to be. And uh, you're going to do this down one side, and then rotate around to it from the other side. Yeah, there's a lot of talking and antics on the other channel, so if you want to watch that one, the, there's a lot of comedy that goes on between the two of us, and a lot more mom jokes. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. On this channel, you get to put up with me doing a little more of the edumacation-ish. <laughs> so uh, continuing on down through, we want to keep chopping on one side until we get the tenon to just fit in. Uh, we don't want to take the, the tenon all the way through. We don't want to chop all the way through because we don't see what's on the other side. So we're going to keep going it until the tenon starts to wiggle in. And here when I pull it out, you'll see there's a, a slight ledge on the other side there where it, the tenon is actually jamming. And that lets you know that spot right there is what I need to clean out. And so I can chisel down and pare it down until it can go down almost halfway through. I don't need to go all the way half through, halfway through. I just want to to go in a little ways. Then we can flip the board over and chisel out from the other side. It's going to be a lot of the the same thing, rinse and repeat. Um, and some people think you know the, the the layout and the drilling is what takes the time. This actually chopping out is what takes the most time. You want to, uh, especially when you're first getting in start. It, it's it's a very slow and tedious process. It will get faster the better you get at it. Especially if you can get to the point where you can hold the chisel in one hand and the mallet in the other and never set the mallet down. You can reposition the chisel with your off hand. Once you can do that, uh, it goes much, much faster because you can constantly reposition without setting the mallet down. It's amazing how much time is actually wasted by setting the mallet down in between strikes to reposition the chisel and then pick the mallet back up. Uh, that, that takes a lot of time, but that's one of those things you're not going to learn until you do it for quite a while. It is a solid skill to learn. So now that we have chopped this all the way through from both sides, we can now get the tenons in until they slide all the way down. You want it to fit like that. You don't want them to slide in with their own weight. You want them to take a little bit of force to get all the way through. And that way you get a nice tight joint. Um, the second one was actually a good bit tighter. It took a lot more force to get in there. I probably could have come in and shaved it out, but I was, uh, I was right on the edge of being okay. And you'll see that one a little bit here. Now we're going to get into the draw bore, where we actually put a tenon through the leg that pins that tenon in place. And uh, for this, we're going to use a half inch dowel. So we need a half inch hole to drill through. We're going to let it blow into the middle because we can't come from the other side. And then um, on the other side, we don't want it to blow out. We want to actually come back in and drill from the other side so we get that down in. Then we're going to put the tenon back in place, put the bit in the hole and tap it down in. This gives us a location on the tenon to drill the hole. But we're going to hold off on that for just a moment because we need to work on the dowel. Yeah, you can see how tight this one was. Um, tip, do not put your head over top of it when you're pulling it out because once it does come loose, uh, it's going to come right into your face. I've done that a couple times and it's very easy to do. So we're going to make sure we drill all the way through from both sides so that the dowel can go all the way through the leg and through the tenon. The Speaking of the dowel, we're going to use half inch oak for this. And if you chamfer the ends down with a block plane, uh, you can get a, an angled surface on there so it can slide past the off center hole. If you just keep it straight, you're going to have a ton of, of pain trying to pound this thing down in there. So chamfer the hole. Back here on the tenon, that's where the, the drill bit put the mark for it, but we want to actually move it about an eighth inch back towards the shoulder. Uh, somewhere between a sixteenth of an eighth inch, enough that there's a good bit of force on that peg when it goes through. This is going to put the hole out of alignment with the hole in the leg. And that way when we put the pin through, it's going to suck that leg into place. So now we can put those tenons back in, look down through the hole and make sure that the holes are out of alignment. And when we put the pin in, now it will pull it into place. And that's why you don't need any glue because it's being held together mechanically. And it's an incredibly strong joint, an incredibly old joint too. Uh, works very, very well. Now, normally I would say go ahead and cut these to length ahead of time. Uh, but if you're willing to do a little bit of wiggling room, you can pound them in long and then cut them off. That way you don't have to cut again and again. Uh, but it is much harder to pound them with them long because every time you hit them, the whole thing deforms and bends out of the way. Um, especially if you haven't gotten your mallet skills down yet. So, yeah. But if you cut them to a shorter length ahead of time, it's much easier to drive them in. It just means more cutting. Also, you want to make sure they're a little bit longer because you're going to be chamfering one end. You want to make it long enough so it can stick out the other side and you can plane it back too. But with a good couple whacks, they can go in place and then we can come in and cut them off. 
And it's easy to do that with a flush cut saw, um, especially with a little piece of tape on there that you drilled through. Now you have something that will uh, protect the wood a little bit more, unless you're wild and crazy like I am and you still go into the side. <laughs> but a good flush cut saw can do an amazing work, uh, especially if you maintain it and keep it clean. Uh, they, can, they can clean dowels off fantastically. So that is one leg side. Now, in this case, we put both tenons into one leg first before laying out the mortises on the other leg. And you want to make sure to do that because it's much easier to lay out exactly where the second leg mortises are um, if you have them in place from the first leg rather than where they should be. Because if where they should be, they rarely are. But here you can see putting the second leg onto the pair, drive the pins down through that, and now we can cut those off and we have a leg pair ready to go. Uh, and this is one of the fun parts where the whole thing starts to come together. We can put in the first stretchers and put in the tusked tenons into those. Uh, here you can see one where we haven't flush cut off the peg yet so it doesn't drive down in there. And uh, yeah, we're going to come back through and, and flush cut off all of them and plane them down a little later. But for right now, we're just going to do the, the test and see how it all goes together. Uh, wiggling the second leg on is actually a little bit difficult because you're putting on both tenons, so you have to kind of finagle it. Um, and it's nice to make these long stretchers just a little bit loose because the, the tusk tenon will suck them up and make them nice and tight, so you don't have to worry about that too much. So that's with it all in place. The one thing we want to do is flush cut off all of the tops so that they are all exactly where they need to be in relation to the bench that they're going to be attached on. So we set them up on the bench and wedged up some of them and then we can use a thickness and a pencil to draw a line all the way around each of the legs. Uh, this will give us the exact spot we need to cut them all off so that we know that they are all um, level to the bench at the location that they are on the bench. Uh, and some of these were a little difficult because you had to cut off a very thin amount, uh, especially with using a, a short tenon, uh, short carcass saw like this. Um, Sarah was having a bit of issue. With, with a, uh, a brass back saw, they are very heavy and they take a lot of, uh, uh, they take a lot more force, uh, especially when you compare them to something like the Veritas saws with the uh, composite backs. They are much lighter and easier to work with. Um, so it's kind of one of those things you have to think through. The brass back, you don't have to put much, much force into it because the saw itself has enough weight to do the work. Um, and so a lot of times the problem is just over forcing it. So we can cut at it from all sides, making sure that we're right on that line, and then slice down, and uh, we are into into place. Yeah, we had a little bit of a fun moment here. <laughs> but that final piece then comes off, and uh, we can do that on the other three legs. <laughs> Once we've flush cut off all four legs, uh, we want to chamfer them just a little bit. Now this is the, the side that's going to be going onto the bottom of the bench, um, so they don't need to be perfectly chamfered, but because this is a knockdown bench and they're going to be carried around, uh, we don't want those splintering off and breaking, so it's just easier to chamfer them now while we're thinking about it. Sarah was actually having a little bit of problem with the full-size block plane because um, it was still kind of heavy and bulky for her. But the, the little Bridge City mini plane, uh, she likes this thing now, so I no longer own it. Oops, I should not have shown that to her. Oh well. <laughs> but hey, if you're ever looking at how do you get uh, more tools past your wife, well, get her into woodworking and then uh, she can steal your tools for you. <laughs> yeah, that's how we work here. But uh, yeah, no, she actually she actually liked this one. Uh, it worked out pretty well for her. We're going to go all the way around all four edges of the top of each leg. We haven't gotten to the bottoms yet because we're going to wait on that until the very end um, and, and make sure it is level to the floor where we want it to be. We're going to be doing a lot more of the detailing and chamfering um, in the last video. But now we're going to put it together and do the, the last final checks on it and make sure that all the legs are the way they are. Um, for some reason this was a, a bit confusing for her because it was upside down. Um, so yeah, get this uh, right in your brain so that the legs go on the right direction. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> You'll have to watch the main channel. We did a lot of, of, of fun antics in this one. It's nice having her in the shop. So once these are in place, uh, then we can start flipping this over and making sure the bench is the way we want it to be. It's still a little bit higher than its final um, point because we haven't flush cut off the bottoms of the legs yet. Uh, we'll get to that here in a little bit. Uh, and we haven't attached the bench top to the, the legs yet. Uh, that's actually going to be done with a couple locating pins because um, the weight of the bench top is more than enough to hold this thing in place. 
put in the tusk tenons, and then we can flip it over and check it out. And uh, this is the exciting point, because at this point, the bench top has just been sitting on my saw bench. And most people at this point would just have their bench top on a, a folding table or a couple chairs or something of that nature, because you don't have a bench yet to put it on. So we can put it on that and then flip this whole thing over and uh, see how it works. And just like that, Sarah's got a bench. And this is where the fun begins, because once you have a bench, everything becomes so much easier. So next time we'll do a little more detail, but until then, have fun. <laughs> So there you have it. Uh, this is a lot of fun. I, we, as you can tell, the two of us have had a good bit of time in the shop. Um, <laughs> it brings out a whole new different definition to a marriage. But uh, yeah, we're having a good bit of time. I didn't know we were redefining marriage. Oh, of course, we're always defining marriage. <laughs> <laughs> so if you haven't seen all the videos, we have two other videos going through this and uh, we are having a good bit of time. There's one more video we're going to have to do, which is all of the details of actually attaching the top to the legs, um, doing up all the trimming on it, the actual finish, uh, all of the things that make it the final functional dog holes and that type of thing. So stay tuned. Uh, probably be another year until that one comes out, but <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Oh, ye of little things. <laughs> so I hope you like this. If you do have any comments, thoughts, ideas, snide remarks, let me know those down in the comments down below. I do read through all of them and we answer as many as we can. Only good things, people. <laughs> <laughs> also, I do want to say a huge thank you to everyone scrolling over the side. Uh, you are patrons on Patreon and keeping this channel going, so thank you for that. Also, if you'd like to become a member here on YouTube, we do often offer um, perks and other things like that to patrons and members. So thank you. Without you, we would not be here. So I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. See. You know your wife's short when this bench is only two inches higher than the kid's bench. I'm about to die. <laughs>